Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our virtual event. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're tuning in from. Uh, my name is Samantha Fifield, and I am an assistant director here at Boston University. Uh, I was actually, I've been working for the university now for about eight years, and before that, I was also a student at Boston University myself. So I graduated with a degree in international relations and did my minor in Mandarin Chinese. So I've had about a decade or more of my, uh, of my life here at Boston University. I know quite a bit about it. Uh, and I'm very excited to kind of share that with you today. Uh, the game plan, the, the plan for today is that I'm going to just talk briefly about Boston University in general, uh, about the application process, advanced credit, all the kinds of things you might be curious about uh, now that it's application season. And then we have a really great treat. You're going to be talking to four of our current BU students. They're going to come onto the, uh, the camera and introduce themselves and talk, tell you a little bit about their experience. Uh, I'll also tell you that you can actually leave questions for us uh, in your webinar boxes. Make sure that you do that if you do have any questions, and that way we can have our students really address your your, your question specifically. So we welcome you to, you know, throughout the presentation, anytime you have a question, feel free to write it in the box and we will do our best to get back to you either online or through our students. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay. Oh, sorry, give me one second. Okay, so. Uh, as you can see, some international statistics just to get us started off. Uh, we are a very global university. In fact, I think that's one of the things that is most um, unique and special about Boston University. Uh, obviously, diversity means many different things. It can be geographical diversity in terms of where our students come from. It can be religious, ethnic, socioeconomic diversity. There's many different kinds. Um, but specifically, since we are talking to international students, uh, we are definitely a very global institution in terms of the number of international students that we have here. We actually are ranked 12th in the U.S. for hosting the most international students on our campus. 24% um, of our freshman class this past year is international students. So that's almost one in four students you're going to be interacting with here at BU, either in your dining hall, in your classes, uh, in, your, in your dorms is probably going to be uh, an international student, which is really, really great. It's great for opening up your mind. It's great for meeting new people from all different walks of life. Uh, that's one of the things I really enjoyed about my MBU experience. Uh, as you can see, Boston is also the third most popular destination uh, in the U.S. for international students. It's a very welcoming city. Um, we have a lot, you know, we're, we're tend to be a rather liberal city, but we have a lot of international students that come. We're, uh, you know, we have a lot of education, you know, we're known as, um, you know, the, the hub for our college and education in the U.S. So we have 60 other colleges and universities in the city, um, each with their own, you know, large international student populations as well. So you'll have a lot of different international students in and around the Boston area. Uh, we also have, as you can see, many, many students from all around the globe studying at both BU's Charles River and medical campuses. And we have not just students, but professors, um, scholars, researchers coming from over 140 different countries from, as you can see, Afghanistan to Zimbabwe, all here at BU as well to engage you in your academic endeavor. So we're very excited about that. Um, this is just to give you a sense of where our applicants are applying from. So you can see this is a blank map, and there you go. So we have students applying from all 50 U.S. states and territories, 163 different countries around the world. Last year, we did receive over 62,000 applications, uh, so it was a very competitive year. Our freshman class size this past year was around 3,100 as well. So it was definitely competitive, but we're going to talk more uh, about that in just a minute. Okay, so... In terms of what you'll need to apply, there shouldn't be any big surprises here. It's pretty much what you were expecting. Um, we are a common application school, so you will need to apply um, with the common application. This year, though, we are also uh, accepting the coalition application, so you do have a choice between those two options. You can apply through the common app or through the coalition application. You are going to need your high school transcript. Uh, that includes all qualifying exams, so it should be um, you know, three to four years of high school. If you're coming from East Asia, so China, Korea, Japan, for example, we only require your high school coursework if you're in a national curriculum. So we don't require your ninth grade transcript if it was from middle school. Um, but from 10th grade to, to 12th grade, or if you're in an international school, we want all from 9 to 12 um, of your transcript uh, with qualifying exams. <clears throat> so that means, you know, if you're in uh, the Indian curriculum, we would need your, your grade 10 uh, Indian certificate. Uh, if you're doing A-levels, we want your IGCSEs or GCSEs. Um, you know, any kind of qualifying exams that you'll, you'll need to have, we'll want to have those included in your transcript. Um, I want to reassure you also that we have, uh, I don't know, a, a lot of a team of professionals that are here to make sure that we are familiar with the curricula that you have, that we are doing our research and making sure that we are evaluating your applications you know, 
with as much information as possible. Um, so regardless of whether or not you're in the IB, the A-levels, the French BAC, um, AP, whatever it may be, we're familiar with a very, very wide range of curricula. So if you have any specific questions about your curricula, we'd be happy to help you, um, but just be reassured uh, that we, we've done our research and we know these curricula very, very well. Um, in terms of standardized testing, so that is, we do require either the SAT or the ACT. Uh, every student needs to take this. The only exceptions to that are if you are applying to our College of Fine Arts for theater, music, or visual arts, uh, or if you are doing the full IB diploma program and you're studying abroad, you're studying outside of the U.S. If you're doing the full IB diploma program, you are not required to submit SAT or ACT scores to us. Um, some students will ask if, you know, if we don't require it, but if is it better to send your scores. Uh, I would say that, you know, if you're kind of in and around our average, if you have maybe 1450 or so or higher, submitting your scores is never going to hurt your application. Um, if your scores are below that, I would actually recommend just kind of letting your IB scores speak for themselves, especially if you're doing well in the IB, and don't feel like you need to submit your scores to us, because if you do, we have to look at them um, and include them in the review of your application. So just be thoughtful about which schools you're choosing to send your IB scores, to, uh, your SAT or ACT scores to. But again, if you're not applying to fine arts or if you're not in the IB diplo full diploma program, then you are still required to submit SAT or ACT scores. We do not require writing for either of those exams, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, we also do not require subject tests. The only exception to that is the accelerated medical program. If you're interested in that program, you do have to submit a couple of them, but otherwise for all other majors, you don't need to worry about subject tests. Um, we do also super score both the SAT and the ACT, so we'll give you the, the benefit of the doubt. We'll take your best scores. Uh, we do also super score kind of across exams a bit. <clears throat> For example, if you took the SAT and the ACT and you submit them both to us, but you did better on your SAT, we'll just look at your SAT. Um, so pretty much in any instance, we're always kind of trying to give you the benefit of the doubt <clears throat> and give you the scores that you know reflect best on you. TOEFL and IELTS, if English is not your first uh, or your, you know, your native language or your primary language that you use, uh, then we would require TOEFL or IELTS scores that meet our minimum requirements. So for BU, for the TOEFL, that means a total score of 90 with at least 20 in reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Uh, for the IELTS, it's a 7.0 overall total score. So as long as you, if English is not your native language, I would recommend submitting those scores that meet our minimum requirements. Uh, we do also require one letter of recommendation from a counselor and one from a teacher. Um, I find that the teachers that know you best tend to write the best letters of recommendation, so I would go with that kind of teacher. Uh, and then I would say if you don't know your counselor, now's a good time to get to know them if you have one. Uh, if you're not able to have a counselor, if you don't have a counselor at your school, that's okay. We just need to get uh, that information from somebody who has access to your academic records. <clears throat> Um, the essays, that's also a big part of your application. Obviously, there is the main common application essay that you'll need to write if you're applying through the Common App. Um, there's a similar one for Coalition as well. And then there are also the supplemental essays. So please just make sure that you're giving 110%. You're taking the extra time to do those essays justice to, to them the, the right way. Um, but that's, that'll be another part. And then other personal qualifications, that basically just includes like your, um, uh, your extracurriculars and any other information that you think adds context to your application. Uh, in terms of extracurriculars, we just want to see that you're involved some way outside the classroom. Uh, some schools do prefer to see, or you know, some universities and colleges prefer to see uh, commitment to one extracurricular over a period of time. Uh, at BU, we, you know, if that's the kind of student you are, that's great, but also we know that there are some students who like to dabble a little bit. Maybe they like to try a little bit of a lot of different things, and that's fine with us as well. Uh, we just want to see that you are, you know, um, getting involved a little bit outside the classroom, that you're engaged in your community, you're willing to put yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit, that's really what we're looking for. Um, but yeah, I think that kind of makes up the, the majority of what you are going to need to apply. I think if there is anything else that you think is important for us to know, if there was you know, a family illness, if you had a difficult time adjusting to, to your new school, um, things like that, that we would want to know, please do include that in your application so that we have the, the most, you know, as much information possible. There is an additional information section on the common application where you can put that. Um, so again, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. Uh, so do I need to take uh, a TOEFL or the IELTS? This is a common question that we get because a lot of you, um, you know, kind of fall in between. You're not really sure if you're a native speaker or not, uh, or if that qualifies. So again, if you're a non-native English speaker, uh, or if a language other than English is spoken at home, I would strongly recommend submitting TOEFL or IELTS scores to us. Uh, however, if you choose not to submit those scores, if English is, you know, a very, very strong language for you, maybe you think you're bilingual, something like that, uh, 
then that's totally fine. You don't have to submit uh, TOEFL or IELTS scores for us to consider your application. But in that case, what I would recommend doing is, as you can see, we do offer or we do accept now the Duolingo English test, initial view interviews, or Vericant interviews. Um, those are kind of interviews through third party services. BU does not do our own interviews. We don't have enough resources to interview 62,000 applicants. Um, but certainly we do, you know, if you're willing to kind of go above and beyond and do, a, you know, something that is not actually required, none of these are required for the application process. But if you would like to do them as kind of a supplement, uh, something to kind of give us even more confidence in your English ability, again, that could only help your application. So again, it's the Duolingo English test, initial view interviews or Vericant interviews are the ones that we accept. Uh, if you feel that the TOEFL or IELTS requirement should be waived, I would recommend sending us an email uh, to the International Admissions inbox. We'll get that email address in just a second. Um, and then you can formally request a waiver. The way that it works is if we're able to waive your requirement right away, we will let you know within you know, a couple weeks of secure sending the email. Uh, if we're not able to waive your scores, that does not mean that we you know, are automatically not going to, to admit you to the university. It just means that we have to dig a little bit deeper into your file and that you won't know if we've been able to clear that requirement for you until after you've received your decision. Um, so, but we can talk more about that later if you have any questions. Okay, what courses are eligible for advanced credit? This is a really great one. If any of you who are tuning in are in um, any of those kind of more prominent international curricula, so the International Baccalaureate, uh, the British curriculum with A-levels, uh, AP courses, even things like the French Bach, the German Abitur, things like that, uh, if you are applying, you might be eligible for advanced credit if you do well on your final exam. So for example, for the International Baccalaureate, the IB, if you get a five, six, or seven on your higher level exams, most of your higher level exams, uh, then you could get up to um, two classes per each of those exams. So that's a semester and a half's worth of credit already done before you even step foot on BU's campus. So that's huge. You know, If you want to uh, do a double major, if you want to do an extra study abroad, if you want to graduate a semester early, that gives you a, a lot of flexibility to do that. Uh, same thing for the A-levels. If you get an A, B, or C on your final A-level exams, uh, if you get a four or a five on your AP exams, uh, there is a little bit of nuance. We don't, you know, flatly award credit for everything, but as you can see kind of on the link uh, right there, the admissions advanced credit website, you can get a full rubric of all of the courses that you're going to be getting credit for, depending on how, you, how well you do on your exam. So you can go check that out. Um, for more information, and again, for any other questions, um, you know, any questions that you have now, feel free to you know just write us a, a question in your, your little box. But if you have more specific questions or if you want to request a TOEFL waiver or something like that, um, the email to get us that is intadviz, oh, sorry, intadviz at bu.edu. So intadviz is the one if you have any questions regarding um, regarding your advanced credit or immigration. Uh, the other email address, if you have any more general questions, is intadmis. So it's very similar, but it's I-N-T-A-D-M, as in Mary, I-S. So like international admissions for short, um, at bu.edu is the other general email that you can, you can email us at. Um, so without further ado, I think that concludes my part of the presentation. I hope that was a helpful introduction. Uh, and now I will bring our four students on to introduce themselves and we can kind of get started with the next portion of the presentation. So thank you so much for tuning in. It was nice talking to you. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the virtual event. Uh, so we're going to introduce ourselves now. Uh, my name is Emma. I'm currently a first year student studying psychology in the College of Arts and Sciences. And I'm originally from Beijing, China, where I went to an international IB school. Hi, guys. I'm Harita. I'm from India, and I am a psychology major studying in the College of Arts and Sciences as well, also known as CAS here. And uh, I went to an IB school in Bangalore. So hi, my name is Xenia, and I'm a sophomore, the second year at BU. And I'm majoring in public relations in the College of Communication at BU. And I'm from Guangzhou, China. Hi, guys. My name is Lisa Huang, and then I'm also a student in College of Communication, study public relations. I come from Beijing, China. Um, my high school was the second high school attached to Beijing Moore University. So our first question is, how and why did you choose BU? So does anybody want to answer that? Well, like for me, um, actually during my high school year, I 
um, like participate a lot of high school, like uh, college, uh, uh, like college summer school in different kind of uh, university in the United States. So I think it's in my uh, sophomore year, I attended a summer college in BU and I took two classes. One is creative writing and the other one is uh, mass communication. And it, it, like the, it gave me a, like around two weeks for me to experience the campus and also the whole environment in Boston. And I think it's just like my place because it also have the traditional like culture park and also have the urban of atmosphere of uh, in B in Boston, so kind of like, like for me, I can both feel like learn a lot of things in the school, and also I can still have a really like modern life. Yeah. Um, well, for me, um, I think I'm gonna separate this into two different parts. When it comes to academics, I think BU is very flexible in terms of allow allowing you to. Uh, pick majors across uh, different colleges available. Like um, me being a psychology major, uh, first year student, I can uh, do a dual degree program with another major, say advertising or public relations in the College of Communication as well. So um, I think uh, this is really good because you don't uh, have to have a set plan or goal and have everything figured out when you're like 17 years old, you know? Um, you have the space to explore. And I think the best part is that um, you have a uh, BU gives you the space to be yourself and be more creative. Even when it comes to extracurriculars and um, other activities, like you can be on the triathlon team, learn Muay Thai, uh, Thai kickboxing, or like play chess at the same time. So I think I love the diversity it creates, and that's why I chose BU. Yeah, so for me, uh, growing up in a big, big city my entire life, I really valued having as many opportunities as I needed to succeed. If I wanted to go, you know, to a gym on the weekend, if I wanted to go, you know, play like paintball, like I could do that in my, um, in my city at home. So a really important part of college for me was finding a place where I didn't feel like I was limited, uh, like you said. Um, and it, I, I felt like it, just through even a little bit of research, you can really tell that um, BU just had so many different things that you can do, so many different opportunities that you can take advantage of. And since I am only 18 and I don't really know what I'm going to be doing in the future, it's really great to know that um, BU has my back. So for me, like, um, I just remember when I was in high school, the second year of high school, um, one of the admissions officers uh, and representatives come to my high school to do a public like publications and events, um, I was just attracted by it, was say by admissions officers and representatives. And also after I come to BU, I just feel like um, you can go through the website to see a lot of different organizations, just like some of us say. Um, also the BU band program, the dual degree program, that's what attracted me. And this is my second year at Boston University. I just feel like this is the right, right place for me. Okay, with that, we come to the next question about housing. So, with any real that's there, take over. So, for housing, uh, I would like to say at Living Water Towers, which is in the east part of our campus, um, this is the, a huge big dorm with three towers, ABC towers. And also, um, we have the dining hall, the laundry, and our um, dormitories. This is the um, dorm that is close to every class building such as the college communication building, the CAS building. Um, so like if you live in water, like especially in the cold winter weather, you can just stay in a dorm yeah. and just don't go outside. That's pretty, pretty, pretty yeah. convenient. Yeah. And I also like to add on, I also lived in Warrentown for two years yeah. and it's just really convenient for me. <laughs> yeah. I can just like dump all the laundry, like eating in one building. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And also like for Warrentown, because it's huge, so I can meet a lot of students exactly. from in different colleges, so it's really helped me to socialize. Yeah. To add on to that, I'm a freshman, a first year student, in case you guys know that. Uh, I'm in Warren Towers as well, and personally, I think it's a great place. To start off with, we have a late night cafe at Warren, so you don't have to walk out and in the cold winter or like a really, um, okay, I won't say hot weather, but uh, cold winter, let's say that. Um, to grab food or something, because the food at Late Night Cafe, it's actually really good. And um, 
another thing to add on to her point was that it's a, it's a really good place to socialize because you meet people from a variety of places during the day if you see there are people from other living in other housings coming in to have their lunch or um a, to grab a quick meal to the dining because it's uh, near all the classes you know uh, the college of arts and sciences uh, college of communication even a couple of engineering schools around so um warren tower is a great start for a freshman because that's when you're starting to build your community around you um, in boston yeah, I think adding on to what everyone says, I'm also um, more in Tower, <laughs> so we may be a little bit biased for where we live, um, but I think as a freshman, you won't realize how important convenience is until you get here, because even though BU is not you know, that big of a campus, it really is helpful when you wake up 10 minutes before your 9 a.m. class and you need to run downstairs, it's really convenient when your class is right across the street. Also, in my personal experience, I got sick a couple weeks ago, and for that entire weekend, I couldn't really go anywhere. And being in Warren Towers, I was able to go eat, I was able to do my laundry, and I could, you know, like meet with my study group. So that was really helpful. Yeah, so um, the next question is about community service opportunities. So I personally did FISOP, which is the first year um, student outreach program uh, here at BU. So it's a week long program that you can sign up for that allows you to um, go to different community partners and do community service over a week and get to know Boston. Uh, so that program for me, I found out about it actually during my um, orientation session. And I really wanted to do it because I'm really passionate about community service and I did a lot of it in high school and I kind of wanted to continue that. Being from halfway across the world, I didn't know anything about BU, I didn't know anything about Boston or the communities that were here. And I learned a lot about gentrification and issues regarding women and children and different minorities and it was a really, um, it's really informational week as well um, because our leaders are all students and they're able to share with us some experiences that they've had at BU and take us on a tea and I also made some very good friends there. Yeah. Well I did not get a chance to do FISA uh, because of my clashings with my school and stuff uh, however yes I have heard it's worth it so guys if you can please do try it. Um, another way that I have heard a lot of people uh, come up with their own initiatives uh, towards community service is through the Bill Lab uh, B-U-I-L-D lab, check that out. Uh, you can uh, plan your own initiatives. Uh, I can give you an example. Recently, um, there were a couple of students who uh, provided sanitary napkins and tampons in many um, uh, restrooms and uh, all over campus. So you guys can do uh, many things like that. Well, um, the next question up for us is, is there a liberal arts component to each major or do you only take major courses? Uh, so for courses, I think after um, class of, after 2018, we have a new um, academic policy called BU Hub, which is a general requirement. Um, like, I think every college has have this requirement. So like, um, it's, besides your in, in addition to your major curriculum, you have to take the classes from BU Hub to fulfill your requirements, uh, such as the philosophy class, um, the scientific class, the social inquiries. Um, yeah. yeah, so like the BU Hub is just a basically a fundamental courses for hubs to help us to like uh, build our knowledge and support our major. So like from BU Hub, you can also like gain knowledge from different assets, assets like sociology, psychology, scientific. And also if you uh, like have not decided which your major is, you can also explore your major through BU Hub. Yeah, because I think every major is just fulfill the same BU Hub units, fulfill the same general requirements. And also if you want to do a double degree, a, the double majors or dual degree, you can only just fulfill the BU Hub so, because every college just have the same requirement of graduation. Yeah. Yeah. I think the great thing about the BU Hub is that it's not that for one criteria you can only have one course to take. There are so many different courses that fill different hub requirements, um, and you don't you don't only have to you know take the one course. For example, I'm sure many universities have the first year writing seminar. It's kind of a first year writing class where you understand how to write at a college level. And the great thing about BU is that there are so many different choices. 
for example, my first year writing seminar that I'm taking currently is called Public Art um, and its relation to memory, controversy, and other issues. And it's a really interesting class because it's so far out from what I'm currently doing in the psychology, yet it's somewhat connected because I'm currently taking a class on learning and memory and the memory aspect of that class really ties in. So you can really find a class that fits your interests and it doesn't feel like you're taking some class that you've never heard of that you don't want to do. I think pretty much covered it. <laughs> so the next question we have is on weather. Um, do you guys want to take them? <laughs> okay, so because <laughs> like since I am a sophomore the second year at Boston, uh, obviously the weather was just pretty cold. Uh, I come from Beijing, which is also a pretty cold city, but it's not as cold as in Boston. Um, so what I recommend is like if you want to go to Boston, you can just um, take more like Cold, yes. Yeah. Well, like for me, also I'm a sophomore at BU, so I actually like the winter in Boston because <laughs> I'm from a place that, because I'm from Guangzhou, the place that never snowed during winter. So actually, I still remember that like the first time I saw saw snows at BU, I was really excited. I called my friends, brought my friend out of Warren Towers to see the snows. We took a lot of pictures, <laughs> and also we went to the food court to grab some late night snacks and enjoy while watching the snow. So it was a pretty good memory. Yeah, yeah I think from my current experience with Boston's weather, um, something that I found was that. Boston kind of rolls a dice and then decides for a certain <laughs> amount of the day what weather it wants to have, which can be uh, kind of concerning and stressful if you live on a very high floor like I do because you can't really tell what the weather is like. And I have walked out in cold, cold rain in shorts and been like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I think you definitely get used to it with the amount of walking that we have to do here at Boston University. And you can just kind of brave your way through it. And it's, um, it, it gets better with time, definitely. Well, as a freshman, I'd like to give you all a tip. Please check the weather every morning yeah, so, yeah. before getting yeah. out of bed. Because I do that. Like the day I did not, I suffered so much. <laughs> I ran back to my daughter, my room right after class to just change. So please check the weather every morning before you get out of bed. Um, well, coming from uh, India, south of India, um, haven't seen a proper winter. Um, although I have been, so if you've been to tracks around the Himalayas and stuff, um, that's just a glimpse of what the winter is going to be like, <laughs> at least uh, apart from what I've heard. Um, the winds can be brutal here sometimes. I remember um, one of the days, pretty recently actually, the wind was so strong on Commonwealth Avenue. Um, I was just like, I don't want to get out, but you know, you've got to push through and uh, you know, go. So just mentally prepare yourself because mentally prepare, preparing yourself for the weather really helps. Yeah, just to do this. <laughs> Okay, so our next question is about whether BU is a traditional or a city campus. So I would say Boston University is more a city campus because uh, a Commonwealth Avenue, which is a street that uh, one of the three of Boston and like our school, our campus, the buildings are just built along this street. So like um, we have the West Campus from the West end to the East end. So the whole street is a Boston University along with the uh, the dining halls along with the gyms, class buildings, as well as dormitories. I think what's great about having a city campus rather than a typical traditional campus is the convenience of everything. Like we've said, mm -hmm. it's really great that BU is so convenient with the things that we have around, like restaurants, like stores that we can go to, a movie theater and stuff like that. It's really convenient for students who, you know, don't want to walk that far just to, you know, get a bite to eat, or if they want to do something they've never done before, they're, it's, it's really accessible. Uh, in my personal um, experience, I had a day where I had an interview for um, a position that I wanted to get, but I didn't have any formal wear, and I would, I just took um, the subway over, over to Newberry Street, which is very close to here. It's about three to four subway stops, depending on where you get off. Um, and I was able to buy something very quickly and make it to my interview. So stuff like that, when you just need to have, have something really quick that you need to do, it's really nice that Boston University has a city campus because you're able to do that. Yeah, because like there are four um, subway stations mm -hmm. with, like, within our campus. Yeah. So yeah. it's just pretty convenient if you want to go to anywhere such as downtown or anywhere up to Boston. Yeah. 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 
another thing I really like about the city campus is the BU Bridge. So that gives you a straight way to Cambridge, the other side. Um, and uh, a quick tip, if you're into watching um, Indian movies or anything else, uh, Apple Cinemas is your way. So you just uh, get to the BU Bridge and you get there and you have all your movies uh, screened. And uh, it's a great thing. And like all of them said, it's really convenient. You walk out of Warren Towers, you have Bachelor Express, the Bank of America, Starbucks, Subway, everything at your doorstep. So um, yeah, go to you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so our next question is things that you wish you knew about BU before starting classes. Uh, one thing I know before coming to Boston uh, is, can I say just one of the BU, um, BU club, BU band, just like the polo I wear today. So I come from the BU band and like before coming to here, I have, um, since I have the experience of playing for, for nine years, so before coming to BU, I go to search online. Is there any musical opportunity in Boston University? And then I surprisingly found a BU band. That's also one of the reasons why I chose Boston University as my college. Uh, I would say there are a lot of a bunch of musical opportunities in Boston universities. Um, for BU band, we also have. Um, it's a very huge ensemble, including the orchestra, the concert band, the pet band. Uh, we play not only in a concert hall, but also for hockey games, so yeah. I think something I wish I knew before I started classes was definitely, well first I wish I asked more questions to upperclassmen because there are many students who went to my high school who go to BU right now and I really wish I asked them more about kind of the American uh, like education system and how it works because I had never taken like a Scantron test, which is similar to like the SAT where you fill out bubbles, but there's like a few extra things. And I'd never gotten a syllabus before because I did the IB diploma program. And that really is dependent on what your exams are and not really what the teacher um, kind of wants to structure the class as for every, um, every semester. And I had never gotten a syllabus where I knew my homework for December 14th. Like I had <laughs> never gotten that before and those things where um, because I was able to um, test out of some of the classes I had to take, um, as our admissions rep told you earlier, uh, I was in classes with a lot of sophomores and juniors where they already knew these things and weren't really ready to tell me everything that I needed because they had already gone through that experience before. So I think definitely asking questions to people from your school from your school, excuse me, from your school, from your um, town who have gone to BU to just ask them questions about their experience, about what they're doing, and also what you're doing right now, listening to a, a virtual event like this can really help you. I absolutely agree with her because I did the IB program as well, and um, I really wish I asked more questions. In fact, I came here and I bumped into a couple of my seniors who went to the same school, and I who had I had no idea of and then um, in fact they recognized me and they were like oh you're from here and here and I, and I was like oh oh man I really wish I did more um, uh, research on who I, <laughs> who from my school or like uh, seniors I knew who went to BU so ask questions um, keep checking the websites and uh, join virtual events uh, this is not the only virtual event that's going to be available so um, uh, just ask away because everyone here they're really nice and they're really happy to help you. They're always looking out for you, so you should look out uh, to ask questions too. Uh, the next um, question up is, is it common to change your major? Would anyone like to go? Uh, so I personally haven't changed my major, but my roommate has had experience with that. So my roommate, Christy, we did the random selection, so I didn't know her beforehand. So she started off at BU as a Japanese major because she did Japanese in high school and really enjoyed it. But when she got here, she took a sociology class, which she really, really enjoyed. And now she's considering switching to the College of Communication and doing an advertising major with a psychology minor partially because influenced by me because I talk about psychology so much in our room. Uh, but she she basically just talked about how um, there are so many different ways that you can approach a, a studying here at BU. And she found that even though she loves Japanese, she's 
so advanced in it that she can get a minor in the next semester. So she wants to explore something new that she's never done before. And with all the opportunities and the ways that we are able to switch um, majors or switch colleges here, um, she's she's really ready to do that, basically. Yeah, also, I also have friends that change their majors throughout the year because I think like BU, throughout the BU Hub, this uh, project, it allows many students uh, to explore different kind of aspects and, and BU also give, uh, give students a lot of time to do that. So I think like it's really easy and common for students to change their majors. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is pretty easy and convenient if you want to change your major. I personally was in College of Arts and Science when I was a freshman, the first year of my college, and then I now transfer to College of Communication. So like there are two situations. If you want to declare or change your major within um, in your college, your school, so you just can just pretty easily declare your major or easily change your major. And also if you want to inter transfer to another college at Boston University, for example, for me from College of Arts and Science to College of Communication, I just take the Communication 101 class and to get a um, get a grade. This grade is, I just um, cannot remember the specific grade, but yeah, I think it's higher than Higher than C. Yeah. Um, so you can just take this class and hire, get a grade higher than C, you go to College of Communication. And also for uh, Question School of Business, you take the SM1, there you have two classes, one finance class and one general business class, got a, a grade upper than B minus, and then you just got transferred. That's pretty flexible, like I told you all before. And, um, uh, I, I can give another personal experience, uh, in fact, with my friend. So um, she came in as a film uh, film major uh, in College of Communication, uh, but uh, with taking hub like to fulfill a hub requirement, she took up uh, finance, and now um, she's um, transferring to Questrom School of Business because she thinks that's where her passion lies. So it's really flexible. Um, all you have to do is know your way and how to do it, and you guys can do it. So it is very, very common to change your major. So the next question is, can you choose undecided for your major? And that is definitely a popular choice. I I don't think any of us have, uh, have an undecided major, but I know many people who do. And undecided doesn't mean you don't have any interests at all. It just means that you maybe have a lot of interests and you don't know which one you specifically want to focus on first. So um, with the BU Hub, as everyone has said, you can explore many different interests and you might even end up without even really trying having a minor or already be on the way and in the process of going into a major. So does anyone else? Yeah, and also I, I would still remember when I went through the application process, many like many of my friends may think that if they declare on the side major, maybe the uh, university will think they do not have a like specific goal for their college. And maybe they think that uh, the university will like, judge on them. But I think it doesn't matter because undecided won't hurt. It doesn't mean that you don't have any interest about uh, like your future development. But also like it can give you a chance for you to explore more after you go to the university. Yeah, especially in a school like Boston University where there are so many opportunities. It of course it makes sense that you don't know where to start. There are so many things that you can take advantage of. So. Actually, I was an uh, undeclared major. Oh, I was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I was an uh, undeclared major in College of Arts and Science. So I took physics, I took economics, I took communications class, I also took business class. After uh, explorations for such a long time, I declared major in college. Okay, so we're going to have the next question is going to be about classroom dynamics. Um, we're going to focus specifically on lectures, discussions, contact with professors, and classes. Actually, uh, it depends on what classes you take. For example, when I was in a first year of BU, um, I took an econ class, which is a very, very big class lecture for a lecture hall, like um, yeah. <laughs> more than 100, person, 100 piece per people. But also for this specific large class, we also have discussion sections. I think each lecture have 10 sub sub discussion sections with different discussion leaders. Yeah, and then uh, for like office hour with professors, that is really common. Office hours, like every professor, have their specific time in their office. So you can just go to the office, ask questions, and then communicate with your professors. Yeah. 
So uh, I think being a freshman, it seems very daunting to, you know, go in and talk to your professor that you, you know, haven't talked to before, and they're so accomplished in their field, and you don't really feel like you could talk to them, but BU professors are definitely very accessible. For me, for example, I, um, I couldn't go to the office hours for my psychology and learning professor, Professor Dunn, uh, but I sent her an email, and within the hour, she responded, and we talked for two hours on a Friday night, so that was really, um, it, it, was, it was a really great experience for me because that was the first office hours that I've ever gone to. And she was super like, warm and super um, welcoming and helped, and helped me through a lot of like issues I had with the class and with like where to go next with my major. And I think uh, with what you said about the lectures, uh, I have a variety of different uh, class sizes. So my, my first year writing seminar is 17 people and my I'm also taking COM 101, the communications um, intro class, and that class is like 200 to 300 people. Um, it, it definitely varies, but with those big classes, there are those um, discussion sections where you'll be with a smaller group, and you can ask specific questions. Um, I also think that the, um, the, the great thing about um, these lectures is that you don't always have to feel like it's such a big class. If you sit in the first few rows, it feels like you're with 10 people and the professor is right there. So if you want to take advantage of the opportunity and you're not so comfortable with such a big class, try to sit in the front because then you can communicate directly with the professor and you can really pay attention to the class. One thing I like to add on with that is when you're in lecture halls, like for example, I take uh, developmental psych uh, psychology. So uh, it is really um, hard to get, stand up and ask questions in such a huge hall because one, you cannot be audible to everyone out there. And number two, there are some of us who are shy and that's completely okay. Uh, you can either wait uh, after class and you can go have a one-on-one -on -one with your professor right then and there, she's free. or uh, like both, uh, uh, like us, you can. Uh, so I have my professor's uh, professor Sardino, and uh, she's extremely friendly. And I found it difficult uh, to do psychology having a jump from IB, which I really did not think would be a huge jump, but it it is. So um, I when I walked in, I made, I fixed an appointment with her through email. So emails are a very key part to communication with your uh, professors. And office hours is when like um, the professors are free and they give the and then you can have one-on-ones with them and ask them all your doubts so please walk in um uh, to the office hours with your professors if at all if you have any questions because it's really helpful if you do not know something in lecture one if you don't get that clear before lecture two you will be the one who's going to find it difficult so uh go ahead and ask because everyone here is happy to help again so don't miss out on emailing your professors and going to office hours yeah, and also like to add on though, uh, like at BU we also for science class we also have lab sessions for yeah. us to like uh, explore and uh, do some research so we can use the knowledge we learn from lectures and like to do more for application practice. Yeah, and all of your discussion facilitators, so those other um, those um, graduate students or PhD students who are leading the discussions outside of lecture, they um, all have office hours as well. So if you don't feel super comfortable going up to your professor, you can always ask them as well. So our next question is, how do you choose classes? What times of the day can you choose? Uh, so I think I can speak on that. So I went to orientation in June um, and I misread an email and I thought that you had to register for classes during orientation, which gave me a lot of panic. So everyone who's listening, please choose your classes as early as you can because they can fill up quickly. And as freshmen, you do get last pick, which means that the seniors get to pick first, juniors, sophomores, and then um, all of us, basically. And um, for me personally, I know that I am not good with waking up early. It does not matter if my class is two minutes away, 20 minutes away. I am <laughs> very, very bad at waking up early. So. I knew that I wanted to plan my classes accordingly, and this semester I was very lucky that I was able to do so. Um, my earliest class is at 9 a.m., but that's only on one day, and for the rest of the days, my classes start at 12 or 11. So that gives me a lot of free time in the morning, and actually I've been trying to wake up early and go to the gym. So, you know, still I'm um, not sleeping in until 12 every day. Um, but 
my, uh, the classes can be very flexible because most of the time it's not just one section. Uh, for example, I'm taking the um, statistics class for psychology currently, and there were three different sections that you could choose from. They're either Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, morning, afternoon, and stuff like that. So you can really be flexible with that. And that also comes with the discussion sections. You can be flexible with where you want those discussions to be and when. Um, so for example, my 9 a.m. discussion is only a two minute walk from Warren Towers where I live. So that gives me a lot of you know freedom in case I'm late in the morning. Yeah, also like there are usually there are two set of time of classes at BU. One is on Tuesday and uh, mm -hmm. Thursday that is usually lasts for one hour uh, and 45 minutes or 50 minutes. And also the other choice is the class on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And for that time, the classes usually last for 50 minutes. So you can also like choose which uh, time period you prefer like, based on your own time arrangement. Yeah. Yeah, I think for class registration, we start pretty early. Just like the, our next semester starts in January 21st, if I just didn't remember wrong. And then like we are going to register our classes in November. So like you have two months to um, like yeah. to, yeah, just deal with your schedule conflicts. Mm -hmm. Also before the class registration, you can actually, every student have an academic student advisor and then this advisor is gonna give you a bunch of suggestions or advices about what kind of classes you are going to choose, what view helps you need to fulfill. So <clears throat> every student, including all the major students, I just recommend you to go to see your advisors to ask for suggestions. Yeah. And a great thing about um, classes at BU is that if you end up, you know, you have a class you really, really want to take, but it's full, most of the time, if it is kind of a lecture discussion kind of style, you can get an add drop form. So this is something that basically a form that you can go up to the professor of that class and tell them, I really want to take this class. And they will most likely let you in that class as long as there are seats in a room. Yeah. Um, that's obviously different for a class like a first year writing seminar where there are literally 17 seats in that room. So obviously you wouldn't be able to be added into that. But for a discussion of, for a lecture, like um, what you said was developmental or what I'm taking statistics, that is definitely something that the professor can work with you on and make sure that you can get into the class that you want to take. There's another quick thing is when I, um, before I came into view, I was completely lost on how I'm supposed to look for my courses. And I'm sure there are many of you out there. It is completely, perfectly all right. All you got to do is email your advisors. You guys would have gotten your emails about who your advisors would be. You guys will get it before you start, um, whenever your semester, uh, you're gonna start your semester. So please email them well in advance so they can help you out. Because my advisor did, um, my ad advisor was Sandy and she really helped me with what courses I must be choosing and um, navigated the whole way for me. So just ask away. And also, like, it's really flexible for you to drop classes if you, like, to yeah. take some class that you really don't like. And yeah. you will, like, basically give you a period of time, maybe before midterm, for you to explore the class and to find out whether you like you or not. So during that time, you can just choose to drop it and choose another class. So yeah. it's basically really flexible. Yeah. Okay, well, the next question is you're going to add on clubs and extracurriculars. This is actually one of my favorite parts, so I think... Um, I'm gonna quickly go through that. Um, so one thing I really liked about VIEW is the fact that there were so many different clubs. So like I said at the beginning of why I like VIEW, um, I can be on the track, I'm just giving an example, I can be on the triathlon team, play chess, and learn kickboxing, and be a part of the advertising club. I mean, can you see how diverse that sounds? And uh, it just gives you a room to explore. You know, in fact, being a part of these clubs, it can actually shape the person you are and help you choose your major. You could end up, you can end up changing your majors eventually. Um, so it is completely all right to come in with one set of goals and leave you with a completely different one as long as you're happy doing it. So um, take the opportunities of clubs and activities to explore yourself. Uh, step out of your comfort zone. If you think you're bad at it, try that because you never know unless you try it. So yeah. yeah so um, currently, uh, um, because I'm from Beijing, I never thought that I needed to connect with my culture necessarily because it was 
basically all around me. I was in China, but coming here, I never, I, I realized how much I wanted to, to be a part of that culture. So I'm currently a freshman representative for the Chinese Student Association. So we have different events like a volunteer opportunity with um, the Asian American Civics Association. We also have different events like the Singles Day events and um, like Midnight Snack Fest and things like that. So that's a really great way for me to find a community within my culture at a completely different part of the world and allow me to kind of engage in some of the things that I did in high school, like event planning and like leadership and things like that. In the beginning of every um, every year, every semester, we have this splash, which means uh, which is a great event. Every student organization, student leaders going to get there in a playground of Boston University, Meekers and View. They are very excited. They're very surprised to just publicize their um, clubs. As what I've mentioned before, uh, the uh, BU Band Program, which is a musical organization, we also have some academic organizations. For example, if you were a business major or business interest, you can go to consulting club, you can go, go to business modeling club, as well as, as the Model United Nations. And also, um, if you want to, oh, for extra correct, extracurriculars, so we have the PDP class, which is one credit. Most of classes are four credits, but for PDP class, it's only one credit. For example, the view band, some of the view arts, the drawing club is one credit. And also um, some of my friends take the yoga, the swimming, badminton, as well as three dance club. Those are just PDP one credit class. Yeah, and also like for me, I participate in a club named BU China Care Fund. So like this class not only helped me to find my community, but also like uh, like match my interests because I really love children. And also I really, I also do a lot of things that supports the children from some rural area back in China when I, before I came to BU. So like this club just helped me to find the, like the, the perfect community that fits for me. And also like in this class, uh, me and some friends also established a Mandarin class for some Boston adopted children. And we just hold a class for every weekend to teach them some uh, Mandarin and also some uh, culture in China. Okay, so um, this is gonna be our final question. It's about our favorite thing about BU. And I think um, for me personally, we've already touched on that, but definitely my favorite thing right now is the clubs that we have. Um, in addition to um, Chinese Student Association, I'm also in student government. I'm a senator for my college, the College of Arts and Sciences. And I'm also in the Verge Dance Company, which is the traditional Chinese dance company. And they're like, I was always used to doing so many different activities in high school. And I'm so grateful to be able to continue that and basically expand on my interests um, because everything here at BU is just Think of it as an expanded and better version of what you were experiencing in high school in any way, shape, or form. Because the, there's just so many more resources and ways that you're able to engage with those clubs and get mentorship from older older classmates and older students at BU. So definitely clubs are my favorite part. Yeah, say for me, the BU event is my favorite part at Boston <laughs> University. Um, yeah, I also, like during the summer, the last summer, I mean this summer, I play um, in a Boston University for every session of work orientations. So like I meet every freshman during orientations and then it just made me know a lot of people and also because of the view event, like this view event like make me stay in the campus of Boston University. And then I got a lot of opportunities during the summer, such as like I did a common ground speech during orientation sessions and also like do some part-time jobs in BU. So like the view event just burns me a lot and then I just really, really like it. Yeah, and also like for me, I actually really like the discussion section for lectures at BU because as just we said at the beginning, BU is a really diverse university. We have students from all around the world. So like in the discussion section, I can actually learn from, uh, learn a lot of different perspectives, new perspectives from people from different culture background. And so I wish I can gain a, a lot of like innovation on my topic on the, uh, on the class I took. So I think that's a pretty good thing, yeah. What I like about BU, like I already said, um, BU gives you the room to explore and be flexible with yourself, which you do not get in a lot of uh, places. They do this through the clubs and through academics, like I've already, like all of us have already touched upon. So I think um, that's why I really like BU. And another important thing that I'd like to 
emphasize here is the faculty at BU, uh, be it a professor, be it a teaching fellow, um, uh, the resident uh, assistants on your on each floors, um, anyone for that matter. They are so humble and welcoming. And I think as an international student, or actually even like in state or out state. Um, it's really important that people are really nice to you when, and welcoming when you come because, at least for me, I was super lost. The campus is huge, and um, you know I I, I, I was put in with a lot of uh, sophomores and juniors. And uh, okay, BU, I, I must tell you all this. BU is known for abbreviating literally everything. So <laughs> yeah. uh, College of Arts and Sciences, CAS, College of Communications, COM, <laughs> um, George Sherman Union, GSU. So, you know, um, it, it was really nice of the faculty to have helped, no matter what question I asked them, like there would be a restroom right, up, right on my right. And I'd be like, hey, where can I find the restroom? They still <laughs> go out of their way to help you. So please um, make use of the resources you have available because, um, there are a lot of places, a lot of people who do not have these. So now that you guys do, you should really make use of them. So these are the things I really like about BU. And I think this makes BU special and stand apart from every other university. Uh, Ran and Boston being a university town, it's really important that you pick up on the unique characteristics of each university. That's why BU. So um, with that, we come to the end of our virtual event. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope this was really, we all hope in fact, that this was really helpful. Um, so yeah, stay tuned, email, ask questions, and welcome to BU if you're going to join us. Bye. 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 <laughs>